What's up guys, this is Afix, and welcome to my C++ tutorial series. And today we will be going on learning about the basics of the engine, character movement, stuff like that. And I want to be able to cover everything that I know in Unreal Engine C++, especially since I know that there are some aspects of it that are really hard to get onto, especially with the lack of support online. So without further ado, let's get into it. You will need to have Unreal Engine and Visual Studio pre-installed. And um, I will put a video, a link for that in the description. So if you have Unreal Engine, open it up and you'll be prompted with this opening screen and you gotta let it wait for a little bit. And then go to games next. Then make sure that your template is blank. We don't want any of these because they kind of fill in a bunch of blanks for you and they have a lot of unnecessary stuff. We want to do everything from scratch and learn how everything works so that we can create our own systems. Now click next. Under blueprint, choose C++ since we want to have a C++ project and keep with starter content um, since there is some useful stuff in there. Actually, yeah, let's keep it. And instead of calling it my project, you can name whatever you want. I'm just going to call it um, CPP tutorial. Click create project. And since this is a C++ project, it'll take a longer to open since the code has to compile before. So what I want to cover in this series will uh, basically be taking you from a noob to a pro in Unreal Engine. So I'm assuming that you're coming in with no knowledge of Unreal Engine. You should have knowledge of C++ and how it works. Um, a pretty good experience in it too, since there is complex stuff used in Unreal Engine. But in terms of game development, you don't really need to know much. It would be good if you knew a little bit, but even if you don't know anything about it, that's completely fine too, since I'll be going over everything. So Visual Studio and your project will open up when everything is done compiling. So let's create a new map, go up to file, um, click new level, and just click default. So this is a map, and our map is basically where all the gameplay happens. So your character is in the map and then like this map is if you imagine in valorant or fortnite like the world that's the map and maps have certain properties too i'll go over that later so we can open up and expand this thing called the content browser and what this is is basically all the assets you're using all the things you created like your code under c classes there is game mode and here and there's the starter content starter content is basically just a bunch of um, pre-made assets for you some materials there's like pre-made uh, good quality materials so here is your place actors area you can drag and drop actors into your scene and what an actor is is anything in the scene so this is an actor this is an actor this is an actor even the sky is an actor so over in the right side you will have your map hierarchy or the world outliner and it'll just show you everything in your scene you can see when i click this here it highlights that and then here and then here you can edit so in the details panel you can edit every part of an actor and this is a component of an actor so what an actor is is basically just a collection of different components um, with certain properties so uh, this sphere reflection capture has a capture component and you can see in its properties here it has a certain location and a certain influence radius and then it has this component which actually does most of the work so what we do over here is to navigate around the editor if you hold down right click you could do mouse look and you could just use wasd to move around the left mouse button if you hold it down you can move back and forth and look around too and if you hold down both buttons, you can move up and down, left and right. Same with the middle mouse button. And that's pretty much all you'll need to know um, for the basics. Here, these are your project settings, your message log. Message log is more of like you get errors or if you're trying to package your project, it'll tell you how everything's going. Like you see map check complete. The project settings, you can set up input, maps and modes, and Let's begin by creating our first C++ class. So on the top left, go to File and New C++ Class, create a character. And what basically what this does is it makes a child of the pre-made character class 
and everything about Unreal Engine is about using the pre-made classes that they have. And this allows you to use functions to mass edit them sometimes or if you want to edit your own custom one except you didn't create that function for your custom one, luckily you have the parent function that you can use to edit your custom character. So click next and let's just call it as character. You'll notice if you just try to write in character, what it'll do is give you an error. Since um, we do have this character class, if you create character, it'll just get confused. Then click public. This will just sort out your code, um, split up the header files and the C++ files and click create class. Now, once again, it's gonna take a little while to compile and fully add to your project. Shouldn't take too long, but it's depending on your project size. Like if you have 40 files and this is your first time opening it um, from the day or from your computer restart, then it'll take a while. So when everything is done compiling, you'll hear this kind of uh, butterfly-like sound effect and you will have Visual Studio open and you'll be prompted to reload your project. Click reload all. If you don't, some weird stuff might happen. You don't want that. So here, let me explain everything in the C++ uh, editor. So in scharacter.h, we have this function begin play. Begin play is the first function ever called on every actor. So here, right when you click this play button, the first thing that calls on this skylight actor is the begin play function. And it basically just initializes certain variables that you want to be set. Then here, this is the tick function. Tick is called every single frame and delta time is basically the time in seconds so you don't have to uh, make your game frame rate dependent because that'll just make it a little bit rigged. And over here, there is a setup player input component. And what this does is it binds keys to certain axes and different functions so that like maybe you want to call a move forward function if you click the W key. Here is your constructor, and this is more of where you set default values for the class. And if you see, if you edit the BP Sky Sphere, you'll see that you can edit it here. There's like the details on the right side. And this, um, for instance, start with tick enabled is called in here in this um, constructor. So go to the C++ class, and this can ever tick is the same thing as the start with tick enabled. So if we actually set this as false instead of true in the editor, um, and we would be editing our BP character, I'm just gonna use the sky sphere as an example, then this would actually be not set, this would be false. That, so that's one of the cool things about Unreal Engine. If you go back to your Visual Studio, let's create our first basic movement input. So first, let let's I'm gonna show you how to use blueprints with C++. So go to the Unreal Engine, um, editor, go to your map, and then right click in the content folder and create a new folder. I just call it blueprints. Open that up, right click, and create a new blueprint class. Under all classes, choose as character. Now I'll just call this BP underscore player pawn. Now we always want to prefix our blueprints with a BP, um, in, at least in most cases. Sometimes you might not want to, and you will probably see that later. Double click on your player pawn. And you see that this is our player. Now, this is, I knew you're gonna be kind of like, this is boring, but I'll explain what everything does. Character movement allows the player to move around. The mesh is basically what the character looks like. Um, so if I set it here to tutorial.tpp, then you will see that it turns into this guy. We click Control Z. And the mesh is just any 3D model. Air component decides direction. Capsule component makes it so you can't walk through walls or fall through the ground, anything like that. And here you can see there's a construction script and event graph. Construction script is the same thing as the constructor, so we won't be using that. Event graph is just kind of like your coding area. So it's like void functions, void, begin play, and you'll see there's event, begin play. Um, now this compile button, what it does is basically compiles your blueprints which is much faster than compiling C++. Uh, but C++ is my preferred method since it does get, Blueprints does get a little bit disorganized. And C++, there's more stuff you can do. For instance, like use certain multiplayer functions. And I'll tell you more about that later. So go into your Visual Studio 
And we let's create a camera for our character, because our character won't be able to see anything if we just possess him immediately. So under s character dot uh, let's forward declare a class. So um, type in class u camera component. And down in the protected section under begin play, just do u camera component and then star for a pointer. And let's call it camera comp. And right above that, let's use this thing called uh, U property macro. So all in caps, write U property and make parentheses. And inside the U property, type in edit defaults only, comma, and then blueprint read only. And note that my IntelliSense, or not my IntelliSense, but my syntax is much more highlighted than usual. And that is actually because I use a software called Visual Assist. And I would recommend using getting the free trial um, since it definitely does make coding a little bit easier. And I do know without Visual Assist, it looks a little bit weird and it doesn't really highlight your code. So nothing really is colorful, um, but it's much easier with Visual Assist. So once again, I'd recommend getting the trial version. Now we just created this thing called a camera component. And note that I wrote camera component rather than just you camera. And that is because it is a component attached to our actor. So it's as if we added a component and then a camera, but we're not going to be doing that in blueprints. Uh, but the difference between that and just dragging a camera into the scene is that when you drag a camera into the scene, you're creating a whole new actor right here. This is an actor, but if you make a camera like as a component, what it does is actually it's part of this main actor, the player pawn actor. So a component is much different than an actor is what I'm trying to get at. Back in Visual Studio, let's go into the CPP file and in the constructor, do camera comp equals create default sub object. And this is a template function. So in angular brackets, write in camera or view camera component and do parentheses and inside the parentheses use the text macro and then text macro is actually a macro function so use parentheses once again double quotes and write in camera comp close that off with the semicolon and i forgot to note you do not need semicolons after u properties generated body u class these are handled by something called the um, unreal engine header tool which is a dynamically linked library file now in scharacter.cpp, what we're doing here is we're creating the camera component. So right now we know we have the camera component because right, we have the pointer here, but it's never actually created and set to something. So here, what we're doing is we're actually adding the camera and we're setting that to be camera component. Now, if you don't do this, you may cause a lot of editor crashes and you might not even be able to open up your editor again. And I'll show you how to fix that um, possibly in a future video. Now, this is something really important under camera component, right? Camera comp, and then use the arrow um, since it's a pointer and write B use pawn control rotation equals true. And B use pawn control rotation basically means that you wanna rotate the camera with the player. So if the player is looking down then the camera will look down too. So here we have a basic camera and I think we should compile now so that you guys see how this code all works and meshes together. Something you do need to do since we do forward declare this new camera component class, we will have to include the header file and the C++ file. So add a hashtag include and then camera slash camera component dot and go back into Unreal Engine, go to the untitled map and click compile. Now what this does is basically compiles all this code that we made and unlike Unity, you have to recompile whenever you change code. So you will get that butterfly noise when the compile is complete. So over here, we will go to our player pawn and voila, that camera component is now there and you can edit it and you see how we can move it around. If you check our scharacter.h, it is thanks to this U property. Now let's add in basic movement input. So go to Visual Studio and in the protected section, add void and move forward. And as a parameter, accept float val. Click control D to duplicate and change the declaration to be move right. 
and then hover under move forward and you'll see this wine bottle appear and click create definition and it may take a while my say uh, say IntelliSense and browsing information are being updated just wait on that and do the same for move right you'll see the wine bottle appear click create definition and if you go to your c++ file they are now there now expand these brackets and um, on, and move forward right to add movement input and inside there you can write get actor forward vector times val and then add that off with a semicolon let's copy and paste this and um, change this to get actor right vector and what this does is it here the add movement input it adds input to the forward vector which is basically where the actor is looking so that he moves forward and times value and value is basically dependent on if we're clicking the key or not so if we're holding down the w key then the value will go up to one but if we release it it'll go down to zero and if we click the s key we'll want to go down to negative one and then back up to zero so here under setup player input component, we will have to bind this action to the function. So do player input component dot bind axis, and it's not dot, I keep saying that, it's the arrow. And in parentheses, do double quotes and write move forward. And comma this, and use ampersand as character and double colon move forward um, if you haven't seen this before this ampersand function reference it oh this is an ampersand function this is called a function reference which is used to call back when the w key is pressed and it's actually not when the w key is pressed it's called every single frame similar to tick um, but it is inputting the axis value of move forward into this function that's why we're using this function reference now do um, go back to that line, click control D to duplicate it and change all instances of move forward to move right. And now we have our basic movement and you'll see why we named this a certain way. And then click enter two times and do player entry component and then arrow bind axis and right look up in the parentheses or in the double quotes and then do this ampersand as character double colons and then add controller pitch input and what pitch input does is basically allows the player to look up and down pitch is um on this axis so if you can see my mouse it's when you're looking up and down then yaw is this axis so we'll click control d to duplicate change the lookup to turn since we are turning around and change it to add controller yaw input now we will probably time to compile. So if you see here, I will show you why we use these, um, these certain names. I'll show you how it works. So let's go into our Unreal Engine project browser or editor and go over and click compile. And while we're waiting, go under edit and project settings, go under input and add four axis mappings and axis mappings are different to action mappings in that action mappings are only activated when a certain key is pressed release double press something like that axis mappings are checked constantly so here we'll do move forward and note we have to name it the same as we named here then we'll have to have move right move right and look up turn i don't know why it's highlighting like that now for move forward add w key and click plus on the key amount and change that to s and the s key will be a scale of negative one since we want the player to move backwards which is the opposite of forward now for move right have d as the positive one key and add a as the negative one key since we are moving left if we click a now for look up do mouse y and for turn, do mouse X. Now click control shift S to save and you'll be prompted here. Organization is really important. So right click 
click create new folder and just call this one maps double click in that folder and let's just call this a p-test map click enter to create that and then under blueprints let's drag in bp player pawn and the camera is completely messed up so go to camera component and click this yellow button and let's move the camera component so go to the viewport in the player pawn click on the camera and move it up to the top move it back a little bit compile and click control shift s to save all now let's add in this um so we are actually we already added it in so click on bp player pawn in the details panel and search possess and under disable choose player zero and click play and you can see that we can look around and we can move around but the mouse is inverted so go back into project settings and change mouse y to negative one now in p test map if you click play everything will work fine So I hope you guys learned a lot today. Um, the C++ is a little bit hard to get used to with all these pre-made functions and um, constant use of pointers and function references um, and super. And I actually forgot to tell you what super is. So super is calling the parent function. So the parents, um, over since we're overriding this function, we actually have to call the parents um, of certain functions like begin play. If you didn't call super begin play, then the editor wouldn't like, it would just, everything would get messed up. So we want to call begin play from the parent function and then make our own implementation of it. So you will soon get used to this. I'm gonna try to teach you everything I know and kind of ease you into it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more of this series.